This is Mori. Hello, if you're new to my channel, my name is Tiffany and I'm here to share about what I know about UX research with other people online. And today I would love to walk you through how to run a usability testing. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned that usability testing is one of the three most frequently used and fundamental research methods in my day to day as a UX researcher. Usability testing can happen in all fidelity or steps of designs. And the earlier you are in the design process where the design is just like sketches on a piece of paper or a wireframe, then it may be more so a concept testing. But further down the path, the designer is in the design process, you know, and you're more so confirmed about the concept of a product. Maybe you're now evaluating the usability of a feature that's more so focused on the usability, the interaction between screens. The goal of usability testing may include identifying problems of the design, covering opportunities to improve, or learning about the target user's behavior and preferences. By observing how your users complete a set of tasks, you can learn a ton of things about usefulness, usability needs or errors and ways you can help your design team improve the experience and by evaluating the usability you can sometimes uncover really unexpected things about the use case of a feature or flaws to an interaction design or other usability improvements as well and that's why I think usability testing is so so important in product development there's a lot of different ways to run usability testing. One way to look at it is moderated versus unmoderated. First of all, moderated is one where you're actually running like a 30 minute, 45 minute or one hour interview. And that's the more time consuming way, but that really allows you to fall ask follow-up questions to participants by digging deeper into the reasoning for behavior. Unmoderated is where you set up a test on a UX research tool and record participants completing the tasks at their own pace or timing. And it's the more faster, probably like cheaper way to run the testing, but sometimes it could really be limiting because you don't get a chance to dig deeper into particular behavior, hence the why question. But what's really great about it is that you can get test results in a very quick timeline because you can set it up before you're out of the day on Monday and you can come back on Tuesday morning to the test results. For moderated, if you were to do this in person, you just meet up with them, you show them the prototype in person and you watch them interact with the prototype and talk in person and you can ask follow-up questions in person. For remote moderated usability tests, you can use any kind of video <laughs> chat tools like Google Meets or Zoom um, and you would send a link to the prototype with the participant and verbally give them tasks and have them complete each task and ask follow-up questions. For unmoderated, you'd be using testing tools to set up and you can collect responses through the tool. There's a ton of testing tools out there, but the one that I wanted to introduce to you today is called UX Tweak. UX Tweak is an all-in-one UX research platform where they have a bunch of UX research testing tools in one platform rather than kind of splitting them into different tools. I've used a lot of testing tools before, but what stuck out to me about UX Tweak was that it allows for a lot of customization in the test setup. They also have a lot of advanced analytics as well. Um, you know, you may have the basics of anal analyzing the testing results, but it really helps that this tool does some of these statistics for you, some of the visualizations for you, so that you don't have to manually have to do that. So setting up the usability testing on a testing platform is super simple. So I will show you one on UX Tweak as an example, but if you are already working off of another platform, the process should be pretty similar as well. I have my computer right in front of me as well, so we'll jump straight in. Typically, the most brain requiring part of the research is coming up with the right research questions that will achieve the research goals. And if you've already done that and already have a set of instructions and ha tasks handy, the setting up the unmoderated test is going to be really simple. So I'll show you what it looks like on UX Tweak as an example, but you can also use other UX tools as well. So you start off by adding the design file to the platform, then you add the task prompts. Uh, you want to make sure that the task is really realistic, actionable, and you avoid giving clues or describing the steps on how to complete the task. For example, buy a pair of running shoes for less than $40 on Nike.com. So I'm going to link a resource that I reference here, drafting out the tasks that are going to be realistic, actionable, and not leading in any way. Then you want to set the answer by setting the endpoint. You could also set a follow-up question for each task. 
and typically that's used more quantitatively like you know ease of navigation or ease of task completion you can of course customize the instructions uh, welcome or closing messages you could also include screening questions at the beginning to make sure you're recruiting the right people um, you could also include pre-study question to collect data about their demographics or persona and then you could also include a post-study question like participants perceived ease of completion or navigation throughout the test regarding recruitment you can recruit your own like your own users or if you're new to ux research your friends or families can be research participants for your case study projects that, or you can hire participants to complete your task uh, that's when you have a very specific you know criteria or you want to reach somebody who is not biased about your project or your design if you have your own participants, you can directly share the link with them. If you want to recruit through a panel through a research tool like UX Tweak, there's also an option to pay to recruit them. Once you have all the participants to complete the test, now it's time for synthesis. Some tools like UX Tweak um, do a really good job doing the analysis for you so that you're not doing so much of the groundwork and you get support with analysis and stats. Within UX Tweak, if you go to the analysis tab, you'll be able to easily see success and directness of, of path for each task as well as diverging path of navigation. I also love the heat maps and navigation funnels, which are really super cool ways to visualize the findings as well. While I love analysis tool and the tool that UX Tweak provides, you're definitely go going to learn a ton by watching individual videos and synthesizing the findings. You'll be really surprised how many people misinterpret words or icons that you hadn't thought of. And that's going to be the most fun and insightful part about synthesis. That was a really quick demo of you know, how, what setting up a usability testing would look like on a research platform and what kind of data points you can use to synthesize your data. I hope that was helpful for you um, and I'll come back in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye.